Greetings and welcome to the first best practices video for third grade. In these videos, we will share what one could expect to see and hear as they visit mathematics classrooms. So what do you notice? What do you wonder about this image? Yeah, I'm sure you could think of some teacher pay jokes, but uh, let's not go there. What about the amount of money in the image? How would you sort these bills? Probably by ones, tens, and hundreds to make it easy to count up the total, right? And hey, what do you know? That is place value. In this third grade unit, students will explore place value relationships and how to compose and decompose numbers using place values. This unit of study will encompass the following key learning goals. Knowing the value of a digit depends on its position. Being able to read and write numbers by place value using standard, expanded, and word form. And being able to compose and decompose up to four digit numbers in multiple ways using thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. And we want to use models, drawings, expressions, and equations. And these goals can also be found in the STEM Scopes parent letter. So what should we see happening in the classroom to help our students achieve these goals? Well, here we see a few snippets from some of the uh, STEM Scopes explorers. Notice that in all of these examples, students are not only modeling with counters, um, such as place value disks or base 10 blocks or other concrete objects, but they're often also drawing a representation and, of course, recording using expressions and equations. This is all part of the concrete, representational, and abstract approach, otherwise known as the CRA approach. With CRA, we want to show the connections between each model, so teachers may select different students' models and strategies to discuss comparisons. You'll notice a mini copy of the Mathematical Thinking and Reasoning poster in the corner. This is to remind us that the MTRs are how students demonstrate their understanding of mathematics. These explorations by students in the classroom could demonstrate MTRs 1, 2, 5, and 7. The types of questions we ask of students will help dictate the types of conversations our students are participating in. Here are a few examples of math chat questions from STEM scopes. Notice that these questions are open-ended typically and elicit thinking and explanation, explanations from our students. The conversations elicited by these questions could demonstrate MTRs 1, 4, and 6. And these map chat questions can be found in the STEM Scopes Explorers. As students engage in their explorations and discuss their learning, we should hear mathematical vocabulary being used by both the teacher and the students. Here's a list of some of the possible vocabulary terms we would hear in this unit. This list can also be found on the STEM Scopes parent letter. Throughout the unit of study, we should see multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding. This could include student journals and the exit tickets during Explorers, as well as show what you know tasks as a follow-up. Students may also use fluency builders with games to practice and elaborate on their content knowledge, such as place value match, and place value bingo. These activities also provide the teacher with informal assessment to gauge the student's understanding throughout the unit. These activities could all demonstrate MTRs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. As we visit classrooms, we may want to ask students questions to better gauge their understanding of the current content. Here we see a couple of different questions we could ask to gauge their understanding. 
These example questions and more can be found on smathsmarts.com or by clicking on any of the benchmark links in our instructional guides. Student explanations and discussions could demonstrate MTRs 4, 5, and 6. Students can continue their learning at home and most likely would want to bring home an engaging task or activity. This activity is taken from the STEM Scopes parent letter. Here, students can play a game called Number Swat. As the parent or other participant calls out different place values, the child swats or selects the number with the correct value. They could use their hand, of course, instead of a fly swatter. Even though this is not in the classroom, this is still a great demonstration of MTRs 3 and 7. We hope this video was helpful to identify some great examples of what one could see and hear in the math classroom in this unit. For more tips, be on the lookout for the next Best Practices video.